This instructional companion on power falls under the major topic thermodynamics, which contains the following six chapters, inorganic chemistry, fuels and combustion, energy work and power, which is where this one comes from, thermodynamic properties of substances, changes in thermodynamic properties, and compressible fluid flow. The chapter on energy work and power covers topics such as energy of a mass, law of conservation of energy, potential and kinetic energy, spring energy, pressure energy, internal energy, which I think is why he puts this particular chapter with thermodynamics, the work energy principle, conversion between forms, power, which is where this one comes from, and efficiency. In the MERM, power is defined as the rate of doing work. Uh, picking a box up off the floor is, uh, and raising it to a table is work. The rate at which you do that is the power. For linear systems, power is force times velocity, or P equals just FV, where of course the force would be in pounds or newtons, and the velocity in either feet per second or meters per second, but we're going to talk about units shortly. And for rotational systems, its power is torque times angular velocity, which needs to be in radians per second, which is what really the purpose of this particular instructional companion is about, units. And the formula is merely uh, T, or torque, times omega, that's not a W. Although in a lot of places what you see is either a capital N or a little n, where that rotational speed is given in revolutions per minute, which is fine, but uh, to handle the units properly, uh, you need to use uh, radians per second. We're going to get into that here in just a second. And again, to save YouTube time, sort of move this up a tad and, and have the overall units uh, for the SI metric is in kilowatts, uh, kW, and the U.S. customary is in horsepower, typically. And there are, of course, conversions between those two if you, you need that, and that's in the uh, inside the um, front cover great place to keep a tab on, of the MERM, okay. where if you have kilowatts, multiply by this number to get horsepower. If you have horsepower, multiply by this number to get kilowatts. Okay. Basically, one kilowatt is bigger than, uh, slightly bigger than uh, one horsepower. But let's look at these uh, units of power equal force times velocity, or power equals torque times omega, a little closer. Okay, let's look first at the linear systems, uh, power equals force times velocity. In the SI metric system, uh, we've got force in newtons, the velocity typically in meters per second. That gives you a newton meter second. A uh, newton meter is a joule, that's a unit of work, and again, power is the rate of doing work. So you've got joule second, and that's what we refer to as a watt. So pretty straightforward there. Okay, and for the U.S. customary, again, power uh, force times velocity, we've got t t pounds times feet per second, which uh, gives us foot pound second, like we had with uh, newton meter second. However, in this particular conversion, we've got um, one horsepower is divided by 550 foot pound seconds. And so that gives you one horsepower. So what we've got is this, in the U.S. customary, this somewhat troublesome conversion, 550 foot-pound seconds per horsepower. Okay, there was no need in trying to crowd things at the bottom of that page. So starting at the top of another page, let's look at the rotational uh, units, uh, fundamental units. Again, power is the basic formula uh, is torque times omega. That's not a W. So in the SI metric system, then we've got newton meters times radians per second, which is what I recommend you put omega. It needs to be that for almost every calculation that you make with omega or even alpha, the angular acceleration. You need radians per second or radians per second squared. And if you do that, you get, again, newton meter seconds, uh, which is a joule second, which is a watt. So no problem in the SI system. And in the U.S. customary system, now you've got foot-pounds, although some people like to put that in inch-pounds, but foot-pound to me is the, the fundamental unit. Again, times a little cross there, times radians per second again. And you get the foot-pound seconds, but again, what you need here is the conversion, uh, one horsepower per 550 foot-pound 
seconds in order to give you horsepower. So you still got the the 550 foot pound seconds. What I see as the key here is is that you have a mega in RPM. Again, some people call that a capital N or a little little N. Well, it's something that is uh, revolutions per minute. And what you need to do is convert that until you've got times 2 pi radians per revolution times 1 minute per 60 seconds. And what you end up with is something in radians per second. And I suggest you do that rather than have a formula that has the RPM in it. And we're going to talk about that on the next page. So again, my premise is, is to have the angular velocity in radians per second. Now, uh, from this particular chapter, that's in, uh, information that's in this chapter, and two other chapters in the MERM, these are expanded. Both the, the same equations, the following two equations, are, appear both in the advanced machine design chapter and the chapter on mechanisms and power transmission systems. And they are the following. Okay, again, to save YouTube time, you have uh, this one is the power in kilowatts, so this is your SI. You have uh, torque is to be in newton meters, your uh, angular velocity is to be in RPM, and you divide that by 9,549. What in the world is that? Okay, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, power in, horse, uh, in horsepower. Uh, for the U.S. system, you want they have inch pounds, uh, okay, but uh, there's a 20, 12 inches per foot hidden in there, and then of course the speed in RPM, and then this 63,025. Well, what are these, okay? Well, the 9,549, and it's not exactly that; it's 9,549.3 roughly is you take the conversion from um, watts that you would naturally get and then convert to kilowatts and then the conversion on the speed from RPM to radians per second. Well, my argument is this is a dangerous equation. Uh, you can do, uh, you can get around all of this by converting that angular velocity in RPM to radians per second up front. Okay, well what about this other number, 63,025? Well, again, and it, it took me a while. This was not easy for me to figure out. It took several multiplications. But essentially, this is the 550 foot-pound per second conversion, the 12 inches per foot, because I think you want foot-pounds instead of inch-pounds, and then, of course, the conversion from RPM to radians per second. Again, um, these are dangerous equations because they have to have uh, the units uh, as specified, unlike power equals just torque times omega. So, Dr. Tom recommends using power equals torques times omega, torque times omega, uh, convert omega in RPM to omega in radians per second. You don't have to rename it as an N or a little n. It's omega, just like uh, standard in all textbooks. And away you go, and then the units will work out naturally for you. You don't need these 9,549 and 63,000. Another one you see is 33,000, which is the 550 multiplied by 60. So. Uh, not not exactly what uh, you want to do, at least not my recommendation. Okay, to conclude this uh, instructional companion, the MERM has a linear system example. Well, I think uh, what's appropriate is a rotational system example, and this and this is a very important one for an engineer, not only for the PE, but for, for work. I did this calculation at least once a day for I don't know how many years. Uh, what torque uh, in foot-pound does a uh, one-horsepower DC motor deliver at 1750 RPM? Now, some motor plates have 1800, but uh, let's just stick with more, uh, more of the standard 1750. So what, does, what uh, torque does this deliver? Well, start from your fundamental equation, like you'd start a kinematic, uh, kinetics equa uh, problem with F equals MA. We'll start with uh, power equals torque times omega, and solve for torque. So torque is going to equal power divided by omega, and, and we'll have 1750. So let's do this uh, numerator and denominator. Again, to save YouTube time, and I like to do this numerator and denominator. What we have in the numerator is our one horsepower and our conversion 550 foot-pound seconds per horsepower. 
and then we have the conversion and you could have done this on the side 1750 rpm or revolutions per minute I uh, convert the rpm to this so I can see numerator and denominator multiply by our famous conversion 2 pi radians per revolution times 1 minute 60 seconds and in fact uh, just uh, as an interim calculation if you're working along I uh, get about 183 point uh, well, you got this in the wind of your calculator, but you got a number like this, radians per second, but this helps with the, with the units. So all of that convert falls down to radians per second. You got foot pound seconds up here, right? You got 550 foot pound seconds. And so the seconds cancel, and you're in, of course, the radians are non-dimensional. So what you'll end up with is foot pounds. So again, I do the equation, I do the algebra, check units, and then get my calculator. Because if the units aren't right, it doesn't matter what the number is. There are no trivial units error. And of course, those other two equations on the previous page are just prime for that mistake. Well, it's interesting that when you multiply this out, you get 3.0012, uh, which means essentially um, three foot-pounds per uh, horsepower. And what we used to get is uh, five uh, horsepower motors, and so we would put the uh, five horsepower motor, and we ran it through a 33 to 1 gear ratio, and multiplying that out, we got almost 50,000 foot-pounds of torque to accelerate a um, 10 meter or 33 foot dish uh, that's tracking a low orbit satellite when I work for uh, Scientific Atlanta uh, as a uh, about every I don't know how many weeks or so there's an overhead pass and so the antenna goes up at about 89.5 it's got to switch and completely uh, rotate 180 degrees Whee! around and catch the satellite coming back over the top and uh, and to, to do that kind of acceleration for a 30 <laughs> 33 foot dish um, we did it with a five horsepower motor so did this calculation lots okay so this is not only one to show you the power of I'm <laughs> sorry bad pun um, the uh, wonderfulness of the uh, power equals torque times omega but it's also a great uh, calculation for you uh, three foot pounds per horsepower Okay. Again, I invite you to visit my website, www.drtomsclassroom.com. 